Hi, everybody, and welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm Gabe Shenhar. And I'm Jake Fisher. We've got a couple new cars in the Consumer Reports garage, uh, new additions to the test fleet. One like of them, the one behind us? One of them sparked behind us, the Kia Sportage. Yeah, the Kia Sportage. I mean, it's a kind of a, it, it retains the, the look of the previous generation with this trademark, uh, no third side window. It does in the back. The front does not look like the last generation it, car. I think it looks better, actually. I might oh, be a Gabe. minority opinion, but I think it has a real Gabe, face. Um, no, oh. thanks. I have my own. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, more importantly, though, uh, styling is in the eye of the beholder, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, in terms of powertrain, we uh, on the heels of testing the Hyundai Tucson, which is a sister vehicle of the uh, Sportage. Right, same platform. Right. Uh, we weren't all that enthusiastic about either one of the powertrains. The two-liter uh, with the regular transmission was a little slow, and the uh, 1.6 turbo was nice, but the transmission, the automated manual, wasn't all that great in mm -hmm. low, at low speeds uh, in here. You have a regular, normally aspirated, 2.4 liter, normal transmission, and it feels, oh my God, it feels so normal. Right, it kind of plays into, you've talked about this before, is the trend of comparing how Hyundai develops cars and then Kia develops them later. Sure, yeah, I mean, you know, Hyundai almost has, it's more of a household term, right? I mean, a lot more people know Hyundais, they're familiar with Hyundais, we're getting over the fact that they're not, you know, Hyundai excels from, mm -hmm. you know, you know, 1986. Yeah. Right, 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 exactly. So, I mean, it's gotten its reputation. And Kia, you know, that's not the first car that people are thinking of. But we've said it before, we've looked at, I mean, we've got a couple of years now of reliability information showing that Kias tend to be more reliable than Hyundais. Um, we also have a lot of ratings of cars showing that the Kias tend to score better than the Hyundais. And here's another example. And, and Gabe's exactly right. I mean, we, we went out and actually got two Hyundai Tucsons. We tried both powertrain combinations, and we said it then. We said, well, it would be great if you had a normal engine with a normal transmission, and too bad they don't make here. that. And now we got a normal transmission right. and a normal engine, and you get the bones of that, that, that Hyundai. And um, it's a pretty nice package. I mean, it's yeah. interesting the way it looks. I mean, I actually it, agree with you. Uh, I like the way it looks. I, I'm so happy. Yeah. I'm happy to have a small SUV that looks different. I mean, there's so many, I mean, small SUVs, I mean, that's where the, where the market is, right? right I mean, sure. that is the new family mm -hmm. sedan. There's so many entries here. And finally, you're in something that looks a little bit different, and that's kind of cool. I don't think ugly is good, though. I mean, ugly is <clears throat> different, and ugly is not good. I mean, I, I, look, I, I really like this car. <laughs> I, I, I drove this the other night. You know, it, 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 it. I actually like it to the Tucson. It has a bit more of an edge to it, you know, the interior. The seats are a bit firmer. There's a little bit more, a touch more heft to the steering. You know, it's yeah. just, it's, there's a little... Subtleties. Very, there, there's a couple right. subtleties that make me yeah. prefer this. I mean, other than the drivetrain, which is a big difference. Right. Uh, but man, the way, I couldn't get over how this looks. I actually love the fact that <laughs> you've tuned into Consumer Reports. We're talking about a small Kia SUV. We're talking about styling the entire time. I mean, what has... What has well, this come uh, to? Actually, let, let's, <laughs> but what let's it's come go. to is what a lot of people buy cars based on, is what they look like. Sure, I sure. mean, just to uh, put the things more in perspective, I mean, it, it, we tested the Kia Optima recently. Mm -hmm. and before that, we tested the Kia Sorento. I mean, Kias are yes. becoming really completely legitimate competitors totally. that are total challengers to the establishment, to the Hondas and right. the Toyotas and, mm -hmm. and right. what have you. Right. I mean, there's also, there are some big improvements. Uh, in this Sportage. Just like the Tucson improved over its last generation, there's some big improvements here. The old one was horrible in the IIHS small overlap test, this one. But it, it, yeah. this it's one's come fine. such a long way. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, a couple generations ago, I mean, they just were really lousy vehicles, the Sportage. And mm -hmm. it's, and, and you're right, you look at the Hyundai Santa Fe, right? And people buy the Hyundai Santa Fe, it's almost like they're like on the inside, right? I mean, they've, they've, they've figured out something that everyone who buys their Honda, Honda Pilots and their Toyota mm -hmm. Highlanders haven't figured out, right? It's like, ah, oh, there's another thing on the side here that's actually really good and a good value. And this is kind of like, you know, the next step. It's like, you know, not a lot of people, it doesn't come to mind, Kia, but, but they're making, yeah, the, the, the Sorento, the, I mean, they're making some really nice, nice cars. And they're surprising the light here, you know? I mean, it's like, it's not just yeah, like yeah. they're just following the mold. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get in here, there's like, oh, that's kind of a neat feature. That they, yeah. You get in the car and the wheels are turned and it reminds you that, hey, your wheels are turned, you know, when you hit the, the gas. The wipers are on this, at this level, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, yeah. yes. There's yeah. a lot of like really kind of neat features that, you know, and sure, you're used to it if you get a luxury vehicle, but you don't mm -hmm. expect that in a small SUV that's a value small SUV. Right, and I mean, also going back to the Optima, I, I drove it the other day, we did a video on it. I'll drive that Optima any day. 
Yeah, it's I'm a, more than happy to take that I'm car. There's a lot of cars in the fleet yeah. I don't. I'm kind of done with. I'm. I really enjoy that car. Yeah, and looks good too. Same with the Sorento. Back to style. No, actually. Well, <laughs> well, that's actually that's kind of an interesting point. Um, this seems discordant to me. It seems like it doesn't follow into the Optima and the Sorento. The Optima and the Sorento, to me, are both understated elegance. This is just kind of goofy. Yeah, I think to it me gives it a little bit more of a youthful character. All right, sure. Yeah. Well, let's talk about a brand that has not been associated I mean, I'd with... I'd buy this car for my, for my kids. Oh, that's nice of you. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> uh, I'd buy the Mazda CX-5, so then maybe I would get to drive it sometimes myself. So, when that's... you have to fuel it up. Yeah, which is how it would work uh, if I had kids. Um, let's talk about a brand that doesn't have a whole lot of youthful appeal. What that might be. Yeah, this is a horrible segue, but I'm, gonna, I'm, <laughs> I'm insisting on making it work. Jaguar. Okay. We, have a, we have a Jaguar XF. Sure, you're fleet. pronouncing it right. Jaguar. There yes. you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more syllables, better. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, you know, Jaguar was bought by Tata in 2008, and we're starting to see the mainstream products that were developed right. completely under top top money. Yeah, so I mean this is, this is a big change and it's actually very analogous to what's going on with um, Volvo right now, mm -hmm. right? So Volvo was soldiering on and you know and suddenly it got bought by Chinese ownership and suddenly people were writing checks to them, right? I mean right. it wasn't like, "Oh, what can we produce for this cost?" It's like, "Okay, what can we do?" So the XC90 got really, I mean completely new. Um, so these are the first vehicles off new platforms um, with with you know, nobody nobody knows what Tata is, but you know, it's a Indian it's manufacturer, a massive, ma massive, ma huge company. But I mean, now they have the funds to do these cars rights, and we have a first chance to take a look at these vehicles. And and I think you know, looking at the XF, I mean, it's not as big of a departure as what we've seen with Volvo. I mean, the XC90, everything is like wow, totally, totally new. Um, it's more of a, you know, they, they've gone less, but. But I still think it's an impressive vehicle. So driving mm -hmm. the XF, I mean, it, it rides nicely. Mm -hmm. It handles nicely. It's nicely finished inside. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, in terms of chassis development, Jaguar has been doing an awesome job. I mean, yes. both the XE and the XF, I mean, these cars are lightweight. They feel light on their feet. They're Absolutely. very nimble. And yet, they also ride in a very kind of supple and, and respectable way. Right. And uh, I mean, going back to the, um, the corporate picture there. I mean, I mean, no one's going to consider Jaguar as an Indian car, but with Tata, I mean, all of a sudden, Jaguar, you know, here, you need all-wheel drive. Here's the money. You need right. uh, smaller, supercharged engines. Here's the money. Right, exactly. Uh, so anything you need for development to make the cars competitive, here's the money. Well, the same thing um, happened. The same thing which happened wasn't the case with Ford. Right, the same thing happened to Volvo. And uh, we have to say, uh, a lot of people watching this will know this, but some won't. Both both Jaguar and Volvo were owned by Ford, mm -hmm. and they were both cast away, and they both went off to have other suitors. And now we're sort of seeing what those big infusions of money, I mean, uh, Geely put big money in Volvo. Sure, sure. Billions and billions of dollars into Volvo. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, what's interesting about Volvo is like, I mean, just everything is new in that XC90, right? I mean, everything top down. And, you know, maybe they needed to do more. I mean, I think the chassis development of Volvo really needed some help. Mm -hmm. um, maybe Jaguar, I mean, Jaguar is a pretty nice driving vehicle to start with. Um, so it's almost more of an incremental move with, with, uh, with Jaguar. And, you know, and, and just look at the line out. I mean, basically they have a new cha chassis. It's gonna be what the, the E, the, the, the E, the F, the F pace, the SUV. So, I mean, there's three new vehicles um, off of this new chassis. And it's, it seems like a very highly developed chassis. Um, they still need some work. I mean, the infotainment is still, you know, you hit the button and you wait and you wait, but that's coming. Yeah. There's, there's a new infotainment system. We'll have to see if it's more responsive and a little mm -hmm. more modern, but they're, they're getting there. And it, I think, you know, one big concern, of course, with Jaguar is going to be reliability. Right. So part of me is kind of happy that they didn't go and just like flip the switch like Volvo did and put everything brand new and just a, a huge departure from the past. Right. Yeah, uh, but you know, some some things are right for Jaguar, some things are right for Volvo. You know, Jaguar has a lineage, has a history, it has a tradition that it has to maintain. History of, of races and being a true sports and British racing so, green. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, we of course we got the British racing green. I'm very happy green. we did. Uh, I'm very yeah. happy about that. You know, the thing is, is I've I've said this before. I I, I adore Jaguars. I've really have the last couple Jaguars we've tested over the years I've been here, uh, that uh, the Jaguar XK 
uh, from the late 2000s. It was one of my favorite cars I've ever tested here. That's a nice car. I, I, yeah. I love that car. This car just, yeah, it leaves me cold. Clinically, everything's right. You're right, it's a great chassis. Uh, you know, it's more accommodating than the old XF used to be, slightly. Um, I know what you're saying, but exactly. But there's something, yeah. there's just some visceral feeling here that's not there, and I think part of the problem also is that you've got other companies now that are out doing Jaguar. Mm. Audi, Audi sure. is a better Jaguar than Jaguar. You know, an A7, I'd take an A7 any day of the week. Well, you can, yeah, maybe Mercedes, I'd say. I mean, Audi is, uh, I mean, and then, to me, Audi is still a front-wheel drive based car, whereas Jaguar is a real thoroughbred, yeah, rear-wheel drive based car yeah. that can be considered a real well, sports sedan. But I, I know what you're saying in terms yeah. of interior, the Jaguar is not exciting. In terms of uh, the infotainment, it's behind the times. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are some real letdowns with the car. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's true. I mean, I would, I mean, actually, the night before I drove that, I drove our GLC, mm. our Mercedes-Benz uh, SUV, and that steers really nice, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's quiet, and that rides nice, and it's an SUV, but mm -hmm. I mean, you know, to just just do that, you oh, almost need... it's a C-Class. Right. C-Class yeah. SUV. Yeah, yeah it's a right. C-Class SUV, right, and going back to the C-Class, which is a phenomenally you know, done car. And in like an interior, traditionally, it's very unreliable. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. But I mean, the interior of the C-Class, you get in there and it's like, whoa, this is just yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, it's more opulent. Right. It's arguably more opulent than our XF. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think that's true. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very accomplished car. I mean, the other thing that's really getting me is I drove that car and I thought, Cadillacs drive like this. And that's a crazy thought. You know? So back like, in 2000, mm -hmm. Cadillacs didn't drive like that's that. Right. <laughs> now Cadillacs drive incredibly, incredibly well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, it's a good point. Uh, both Jaguar and Cadillac are the lightweight and the, the ones that put the sport back in sports sedan. Mm. Whereas BMW, Mercedes kind of like moved away and became like, put the emphasis more on high tech and refinement and, and such. I think Mercedes is getting back quicker than BMW is. I would assume BMW will try to come Could back be. to it. But yeah. then again, BMW is selling lots of cars, so maybe mm -hmm. they'll just be happy with where they're going. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of Talking Cars. As always, we thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.